I've been to many countries around the world and no one I've ever met has been to Libreville, Gabon. So come with me as I explore this mysterious city that no one seems to talk about and give you an inside peek at some of their amazing culture, nightlife, and things to do in the capital city of Libreville. For those that don't know, Gabon is located on the western side of Africa. It borders Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, and the Republic of the Congo. Now when looking up things to do here, I couldn't find much information, which has been the case in many French-speaking African countries I've visited. But once I saw the beach on my ride from the airport, I knew exactly where I'd be stopping first. Lyon MBA Beach was right across from my hotel, so I only had to cross the street to get there. Like many of the beaches I've visited in this region, it was very calm during the weekdays. But on the weekends, you're going to find music playing from different places along the beach and families everywhere enjoying the nice weather. I visited in August and the weather was between 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit every day I was there. The beaches here are lined with palm trees, which makes for some awesome views. Now at the beach, I met a lot of people and was even invited to a birthday party. The Gabonese people I met took me to their uncle's 60th birthday celebration. This was probably one of the most fun house parties I've ever been to. Everyone was so warm and loving. The man of the hour gave a great speech, but it was in French, which is the primary language spoken in Gabon. But he was also kind enough to give it in English for the English speakers in attendance. There were tons of local dishes at the party, which were absolutely delicious. After dinner, the music was turned up and we danced all night long, literally. Everybody got involved in the party in two. Friends, family, young and old. I had so much fun. We were doing line dances, salsa, bachata, kazumba, you name it. They even taught me some of their traditional dances. After that long night of partying, the next day, I got up and visited La Bay de Rios, or in English, the Bay of Kings. This recently developed area was built to offer the people of Libreville a space for relaxation and entertainment. At the Bay of Kings, you'll find many different eateries, small bars, and wide open spaces for families to enjoy. As you've probably noticed from my other videos, weddings are pretty big in Africa, and Gabon was no exception. I can't even explain how many couples I saw taking wedding photos here. The area has good music playing all day. It's right off the coast so there's always a good breeze coming through. There are small markets where you can shop. It makes for a great place to relax and unwind. Later that night, the same family that invited me to the birthday party also invited me to a private ceremony called Withdrawal of Grief. Approximately one year after someone's funeral, this ceremony is held to signify the end of the grieving period for that person's loved ones. This festive ceremony typically lasts from sunset to sunrise, so I was there all night. Throughout the event, dancers dance in front of the deceased photos as well as other different rituals. People dressed as spirits also enter the ceremony to speak to the deceased. There was food, drinks, music, laughter, and tears as loved ones used this time to end their mourning period. There were lots of other interesting things going on that were being explained to me, but due to the language barrier, I couldn't comprehend most of it. Even so, this was an amazing and unique experience. I felt very lucky to be a part of it. Since I was up all night the past few days, I decided to just relax at the hotel the following day, which was at the Park Inn Hotel by Radisson. Oddly, the Park Inn is right next door to the actual Radisson Hotel, but the rooms at the Park Inn are much less expensive. Anyway, I stayed in their standard room with the sea view, which cost around $110 per night. 
The room came with all the amenities you would expect from a four-star hotel, such as a 32-inch TV, Wi-Fi, cable, and so on. I spent the most time at their pool. If you ever get tired of the pool, you can just walk across the street to the beach. Super relaxing. When I wasn't at the pool or beach, you can find me on the patio, which was my favorite part of the hotel. The patio had a restaurant, a huge big screen television where they play movies some days, and a nice bar. Also, most nights they had a live band or DJ playing music after dinner. In fact, this was one of the places many people came to pregame before heading to the nightclubs. The best nightclub in Libreville is probably the club No Stress. If you get there early enough, you might be able to jump on the mic for some karaoke. But if not, the DJ has you covered. They played a mix of Afro beats and rap music throughout the night, and there was no entry fee to get in. Mixed drinks cost about $8 and beers around $4. Another night spot that I enjoyed was Yoka Lounge. This place was much more low key and calm. Now you know I'm a foodie, so I had to try out a few restaurants. One of my favorites was the restaurant La Voix La Rouge, or the Red Cell in English. I don't speak French at all, so let me know in the comments section if I'm pronouncing that right. The Red Cell is an amazing restaurant because it's right on the beach, which always brings a vacation vibe to a restaurant. I usually came here during early happy hour for drinks and small appetizers. For dinner, I highly recommend the restaurant Mystic Bantu. The decor in this place was very beautiful and unique. They also play Afrobeats music while you eat, so the energy was good. I recommend trying the pork, delicious. For lunch, I found myself a few times at the sushi restaurant Little Buddha. I hear they have the best sushi in town. The next time I visit Libreville, I definitely have to stay longer. Six days just wasn't enough. Everyone in the city made me feel at home and welcome, and there are so many other things I want to do, so I'll for sure be visiting Libreville again. As far as requirements to enter Gabon, you'll have to get the yellow fever vaccine. Also, US citizens do not need a visa. As always, these requirements do change, so make sure you double check before your visit. If you visited Libreville before or you live there, leave some of your favorite things to do in the city down in the comment section. Also, make sure you hit that like button to help other people find this video. Check out the link on the screen for more of my content on West Africa. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.